Now that we've had our introduction into exactly what cylindrical coordinates or the cylindrical coordinate system is, now let's talk about some common surfaces that you will see within the cylindrical coordinate system. Now, with that in mind, when we were talking about 3D graphs in a previous section on uh, quadric surfaces, we mentioned that taking a look at traces is usually a good way to envision what's going on in three dimensions. So what I wanted to do is introduce a couple of those traces and talk specifically about two that we're going to see from time to time, the XY trace and what I like to refer to as the RZ trace. Now, as far as the RZ trace is concerned, that's going to look a little different than other traces. So when it comes to the XY trace, that's where we're essentially looking at something from above. So Z axis is coming straight up out at you and um, we, uh, we're looking directly down on it. We get that by setting our Z variable equal to a constant. Now, regardless of the point that I pick out here, what I can do is define theta in such a way that we can create an imaginary R axis coming out of the, uh, the origin. We can also define it in such a way where regardless of the direction that we draw, that R is going to be a positive number. Now imagine, if you will, taking that R-axis and combining it with the Z-axis that is coming directly up. What you would get out of this is referred to, or I refer to it as, the RZ trace. This is going to be really helpful basically any time we're interested in converting something into uh, the cylindrical coordinate system or basically any other rotational coordinate system. So what this is essentially saying is that we have fixed a value of theta. We are essentially saying pick one direction for theta and then to actually create whatever this three-dimensional surface is we take whatever we get here and we rotate it about the z-axis. So let's talk about some examples of things in cylindrical coordinates. First one will simply be r is equal to a. We already uh, mentioned this in the previous video. This is a cylinder in three dimensions. So go out A units and create a circle. Oh boy, that's a circle, all right. Oh yeah, come on, circle. Oh boy, oh boy. And then we'll also have the rulings going straight up and down. Yeah, that's straight up and down, all right. We'll do one here. Make it look like it's in front, and then we'll do one back here and make like it's in back and then basically anywhere along here we're gonna see circular cross sections now as you can tell I'm pretty terrible at drawing this in three dimensions so what I'm gonna do is let you know what the XY trace looks like so in terms of the XY trace we would be treating this the same way that we would be treating R squared is equal to a squared or converting back from polar coordinates into rectangular coordinates, this would be x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared. We know that to be a circle of radius a. We can also interpret it that way based on the fact that the displacement from the pole is supposed to be a units. Now regardless of the direction that I choose, here's what a cylinder, uh, excuse me, here's what a cylinder would look like in the RZ trace. Well, this would be the same as like uh, x equals a constant or y equals a constant when graphing one of those. So essentially this is simply going to be a vertical line straight up and down. So take a vertical line like this and trace it out over the entirety of the circle and that is the cylinder that you would be sweeping out. Again, becomes a little bit easier for us to figure out in uh, uh, through the use of traces. So again, a right circular cylinder. All right, second example, we'll do theta is equal to alpha, where alpha is a constant. Constant. There we go. Now, in uh, as far as the xy trace is concerned, for theta equals a constant, we can once again define r so that it has to be a positive value. So 
select a direction, and let that be it. Now in terms of an RZ trace, this isn't going to look particularly good because there is no R, so I'll just let you know that if we were to draw this in three dimensions, is the x-axis, y-axis, essentially what I have just done is picked a direction for theta. This thing is going to have R independence as well as Z independence. So Z says that this thing can move up and down, and R says we can translate this back to the Z axis. What we're creating here is essentially a plane, but we're not really going to call it a plane. It extends infinitely in one direction, but it doesn't extend infinitely in the opposite direction. It is for that purpose that we are going to refer to this as a half plane. We're not going to use half of the quotation marks though. So a half plane points in only one direction, starting from the z-axis and going out from there, much like this is very much like a half line or a ray. Now hopefully this will be fairly straightforward, but the next one I want to talk about is z being a constant. There's not a whole lot of use of um, talking about an xy trace because there is no uh, x or y in this thing. So instead, let's talk about the rz trace. Now if z is a constant, that is simply going to look like a horizontal line when we consider z as the vertical axis. So imagine I take this ray and I rotate it about the z axis. What will take place is then x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, there will be some point on the z-axis and then this thing will extend infinitely in all directions from there. Normal vector will be orthogonal to the z-axis and so it extends infinitely in the direction of both the x-axis and the y-axis. So yeah, that's simply going to be a plane extending infinitely in a, uh, the x and y directions. So some other common graphs that tend to show up. Here's a common one in cylindrical coordinates. This is z is equal to r. So the rz trace for something like this would look like a straight line, slope 1, passing through the origin. So imagine that I take this thing. Actually, I suppose that it would extend down this away as well if r were to be a negative value. But if r is negative, that's going to make z negative as well. So imagine I take this line and I rotate it about the z-axis. What gets created, and oh boy, we're going to really put the uh, lack of drawing skills to the test here, is you'll get something like, oh boy, oh boy, okay, a cone that will extend both above the axis as well as below the axis. Now cones we studied in our um, quadric surfaces. Let's talk about how to actually prove that this winds up being a cone. What we're going to do is convert this from cylindrical back into a rectangular coordinate system. So the way that we're going to do so is I can convert r squared pretty easily. So I'm going to square both sides of the equation letting us know that this is going to be z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. If we analyze the traces, xy trace is going to be a circle or an ellipse. Uh, xz is going to be a hyperbola. yz will be a hyperbola as well. From there, it's fairly straightforward to show that this thing winds up being a cone. Now, it's fairly typical that we can talk about what uh, quadric surfaces look like in polar coordinates, but there are really only two that tend to show up pretty frequently. One of them is the cone. The other, and hopefully this will be fairly straightforward to uh, wrap your head around, but this is z equals r squared. So z equals r squared. The rz trace for this would simply be a parabola. So imagine taking this parabola and rotating about the z-axis. And 
then we're gonna wind up with something that is parabolic in nature in all four of these directions with a, circ a circular, oh boy, cross section. Um, yeah, that's why I like to draw it like this and say, all right, rotate that about the Z axis and that's the surface that we're gonna get out of this. This would be your elliptic paraboloid. Now, I suppose there is one more that's, I guess, kind of common in this coordinate system. It is constant. Oh, we never actually converted the last one because it converts exceptionally easily. That's z is equal to x squared plus y squared. So xy trace is a circle, xz trace is a parabola, yz trace is a parabola as well. Now this one also converts pretty nicely. This would be x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to a squared and we know this to be a sphere. Now if we were to consider the RZ trace here, uh, the RZ trace would look like a semicircle. And the reason I say semicircle instead of full circle is because we're gonna allow R to maintain a positive value. Once we rotate it about the Z axis, we're gonna get a nice sphere anyway. Uh, all right, let's put those drawing skills to the test one more time. All right. There we go, there's a nice drawing of a sphere in three dimensions. Perfect. So, one of the things to get used to is converting these equations between the rectangular and the cylindrical coordinate system and to acquaint yourself with the uh, RZ trace.